Hi guys, um, welcome back to my channel. Um, so I'm Georgina, for those of you that don't know me. Um, and today's practice is all about self-love um, and kind of like cultivating that feeling of self-love. Now, traditionally or frequently, we often see self-love practices focusing on like heart openers and back bends. And there's a lot of reasons for that that I won't really go into, but for me, I find heart openers the opposite of self-love because they are, they exacerbate a lower back problem that I have from uh, weak glutes and years of Irish dancing. Um, but the other thing is, for me, back bends often kind of make me more goal orientated, like for that picture and the pretty back bend because they look really lovely. Um, but that then brings me into a state of mind that isn't very, well, self-love. It's about a goal. So this practice actually won't include any back bends because for me, I find self-love in creating strength. And my yoga, for me, is about self-love because I lose all that noise that's in my brain when I flow. So this practice is gonna have lots of repetition, it's gonna have lots of flow so that we can access that flow state that is so healing. And at the end, we're gonna slow things down and do a couple of pigeon poses, that sort of thing, because um, the gift to yourself to slow down is huge. And second of all, that's when we kind of challenge the noise the most when we're still. So I hope that makes sense. It was a bit of a ramble. Um, I have actually written a blog post a little bit more about this practice, which I'll post the link for below, which hopefully you can read and understand and like, I don't know. Um, but otherwise, we are gonna get started. Now, one thing before we do start, and this relates back to self-love, is that you might need a couple of blocks for today's practice. If you haven't got blocks, not a problem. You can use like jars, about this high, Harry Potter books, my favorite. It's not, it doesn't matter what you use, but you might need a bit of height. We're gonna explore pyramid pose a few times today. So what this looks like is we'll be in a low lunge and then we'll lengthen out the front leg. Now sometimes if you've got slightly tighter hamstrings, you want a bit more height. Blocks on the highest height is really useful. Books, a couple of them stacked up. If you don't need them, don't worry. We are going to start in child's pose today. So, Coming into child's pose, bring your big toe mounds to touch, glide your bum back to your heels. Make this what feels most nourishing. So either knees hip distance apart, or they can be a bit further apart if that feels a little bit better. Not your chest down towards the ground, maybe your forehead touches the mat, doesn't matter if it doesn't. And just take a couple of seconds to breathe. And gently pulling the arm bones back into their socket. And finding a full inhale through the nose. And then a full exhale through the nose. And like you're melting your chest down onto your thighs. And the breath is slow, but it's so, so full. And slowing down before we even begin the practice, getting out of that habitual sense of rush that we just kind of spend our days in quite often. Take another breath in. One more big breath out. And then as you inhale, come up to hands and knees. So your shoulders are over your wrists, your knees are below your hips. You're spinning your biceps forward and your triceps back. And we'll just begin with a couple of circles around on the wrists. So shoulders come forward and they glide back. And then they come forward and then they glide back. And just do this a couple of times. Just creating a bit of movement, pressing down through all 10 fingers, keeping the shoulders away from the ears and then go the other way. Just a little, be nice to yourself though. This doesn't have to be super big, just make it feel good. Okay, and then the next time that you get to center, we're just gonna come straight into a downward dog. So you're gonna tuck the toes. And then lift the hips nice and high. Now if this needs to be high on the tiptoes, bent knees because it's first thing in the day or first time that you've practiced or maybe your hamstrings just aren't that long, that is fine. 
The arms stay strong and rooted. Move down through the balls of the feet. Draw the front rib cage in, keep the ears in line with the arms. Okay, and then find that nourishing breath here. So in through the nose, and out through the nose. And then pedal out the feet a couple of times, and make your downward dog feel really nice, so you can find any little wiggles that you would like. And just take a couple. Okay, and then on your next exhale, find stillness again. Maybe sending the heels slightly more down towards the earth. And notice in this stillness how nourishing a fullness of breath can be. And that chance to slow down, to root down through the hands and the feet. Say to yourself, I am here, and give yourself this gift. Take another breath in. Another exhale. And then on your inhale, take your feet back one step and come up onto your tiptoes. And soften the knees, tuck the tailbone under and begin to round through the spine. So the low spine, the mid spine, the upper spine until you roll forward to a plank pose. Collarbones forward, waist in, and then exhale, soften the knees, slightly glide it back. Downward facing dog. Okay, let's go again, tiptoes on the inhale. Soften the knee so you can tuck the tailbone under, so the low back rounds, the mid back, the upper back, between the shoulder blades and the collarbones forward. Front body up towards the back body and then glide back. Downward dog, one more tiptoes. Soften the knees, round that spine, so root the fingers, root the toes, and then when you get into your plank pose, collarbones forward, the heel of the hands joint just slightly towards those toes, front body to back body, take an inhale, and then exhale, drop the knees. Uncut your toes, let your bum back to your heels, and then just spin your palms with the face up, and drop your chest and your head down in between the arms, and close the eyes for a second. And you can star out the fingers a couple of times, and melt the chest down to the ground, big, big nourishing breaths. And put the hands, the hands, the hands down the flat. Come up to forearms this time, and we'll come straight into a forearm plank. So you're gonna lengthen out the legs, send the heels back behind you, pull that chest forward, and then magnetize everything to center. So squeeze the elbows towards each other, inner thighs, sides of the waist, belly button, in, up in it, and then breathe. And can you bring a sense of ease to this? But then know that you have the strength to hold it. And find empowerment in the fact that you are holding this plank. We're going to hold it for one more inhale. Root down. And then exhale, drop the knees and just walk your hands or your knees towards you. And we're just going to come back into a child's pose. And every single time that you come to stillness, whether that is in a downward dog or a child's pose, find your breath again. Sometimes we lose it when we flow. And this is a perfect chance to slow it back down. Okay, when you're ready, back up to hands and knees and back into a downward facing dog. Tuck the toes and lift the hips. Okay. And rooting down through the hands and gently just pulling the arm bones back into their sockets so the shoulder blades lift slightly. Take an inhale. And then as you exhale, bend your knees and just stroll to the top of the mat. And take your time. Nice and slow, and bring the feet nice and wide when they get to the top of the mat, soften the knees, and then either opposite shoulders or opposite elbows, taking hold, just drop down towards the ground. And begin to sway this out from side to side. And this is about kind of self-discovery as well, so it's about figuring out what feels best for you. It's not a one-size-fits-all model. Like, does swaying feel nice? Or do you actually feel better being still? Just ignore me if you do and stay still instead. But find those big, big breaths. Okay. Next time that you come to center, drop the hands down. Maintain softness in the knees and then just roll up to standing. And even as you roll up, remember to breathe. And then when you make your way to standing, shoulders roll back. 
back and step those feet closer together at the top of the mat, okay? Ukatasana, inhale, bend the knees. Arms to the sky, chair pose. Okay, draw your inner thighs in, tuck the tailbone, lift the heart to the fingertips. Okay. And when your mind tells you you are weak, say back to it, you are strong. Take an inhale. Good, okay, fold it down, exhale. You can keep the knees soft if you need to, and then inhale to halfway lift, spin the inner thighs back, the shoulders back, send the chest forward. Exhale, hands to the ground. Step the right foot to the back of the mat, and then drop your back knee down, and uncurl your toes. Low lunge, so inhale, take the arms, and reach them all the way to the sky. Magnetize the feet, and then puff the chest up to the fingers as you inhale. Exhale, the hands come down either to those books, tented fingers, or flat on the ground. Tuck the back toe, raise the back knee, inhale, lengthen out the front leg, and then just bow it down over the top. Magnetize the feet together, find that lengthening through the spine. And take another exhale like you're dropping, and then inhale, bend the front knee. Then maintain strength in the legs, root the feet, and take the arms all the way up to the sky. High lunge. Exhale, hands go down to frame the front foot. Round the upper back so you have space. And then root the back toes, left leg lifts. Extend through the left leg, three-legged dog. Exhale, come forward to plank. So toes meet at the back of the mat and your shoulders come over your wrists. Now drop the knees on the exhale. So often in yoga, we do not push back up from a chaturanga. We are creating strength. We are going to push back up from a chaturanga. Exhale to lower. Inhale up. Okay, exhale, child's pose. This is only transitional, you're not going to be here long. And then inhale, come back up. Toes tuck, lift the knees if you would like. They can stay down and then lower straight down to the mats. Okay, inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Keep those elbows squeezing in. Hips lift back and high. Two breaths as you are. Fill up on the inhale. Root on the exhale. Good. One more inhale. And then bending the knees, gaze comes to the hands. You can walk, step, or hop to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Inhale. Fold it down. Exhale. Inhale. Circle the arms to the sky. So long legs extended to the fingers. And then we're going to sit back into Ukatasana chair pose. Exhale. Okay. Inner thigh squeeze in. You have that strength. Inhale. Go a little bit longer through the waist. And then lengthen out the legs. Fold. Exhale. Inhale. Inner thighs back. Half forward. Halfway lift. Exhale. Hands to the ground. The left foot steps to the back of the mat. Drop the back knee, uncurl the toes, magnetize those feet together, root them down, and then extend into the fingers' breadth. Good, that front foot is strong on the mat. Take an inhale. Exhale, hands come down, frame the front foot. Tuck the back toes, raise the back knee. You have the blocks, the books if you need them. Inhale, lengthen out the front leg. And then exhale, bow down over the top. Now keeping that length through the low spine. Heart melting down towards the front thigh. And soften for one more exhale. Inhale, bend back into the front knee. Root those feet, especially that front big toe mount. And then inhale. High lunge. You can soften that back knee if you need to. Magnetize everything to the midline. Heart lift. Exhale, hands, slow motion, go down. Now round through the upper back to create space. Root the fingers, inhale, three-legged dog, right leg high. Exhale, come forward to plank pose, toes together at the back of the mat, shoulders over wrists, drop the knees. Now you can keep the knees raised for these press-ups if you would like. Shoulders over the wrists, exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, back up. Exhale, child's pose, just transitional. Inhale, come up. Either staying on hands and knees or you can come into plank pose and lower all the way down to the mat. Inhale for your back bend, wide collarbone, shoulders down, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Take an inhale. 
And take an exhale. Okay, one more, let that fill up, inhale. Slow, steady exhale. And bend those knees, gaze comes forward, walk, step or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle your arms to the sky, strong feet. Hollow the belly, extend into the fingers, and then exhale, Utkasana, chair pose. Okay, let's move with our breath a little bit more this time, so find that strength in those feet. Like you're pressing through the big toe mounds so the toes become light. The chin lifts a little bit, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Hands down, exhale, the right foot steps back. Drop the back knee and curl the toes. Inhale, arms to the sky, low lunge. Feet draw together, the heart lifts. Exhale, hands to the earth. Tuck the back toe, raise the back knee. Inhale to lengthen out the front leg, bow down as you exhale. Inhale, bend back into the front knee, strong feet. Inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands come down. Inhale, left leg straight back behind you, three-legged dog. Exhale, come forward to a plank pose. You can drop the knees if you need to. One, push up. Inhale, up, exhale to your child's pose. Inhale, either hands and knees or plank pose. And exhale to lower straight to the mat. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, two breaths. And find your steady here. And listen to the sound of your heart beating. A sign that you are alive, that your body is doing so much for you. Take one more breath in. And then bend the knees, look forward, walk, step, or hop to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold it down, exhale. Good, inhale, arms to the sky. Root the feet, extend into the fingers, exhale, bend the knees, Ukatasana. take a breath in. Fold, exhale. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands down, left foot to the back of the mat. Back knee down, and curl the toes, inhale, arms to the sky. Low lunge, rooting the front foot. Exhale, hands to the ground. Tuck the back toe, raise the back knee, inhale, full length. Exhale, bend back into the front knee. Inhale, arms to the sky, high lunge. Exhale, hands find the earth. Inhale, three-legged dog, extend the right toes high. Exhale, come forward to plank pose, drop the knees if you would like. One chaturanga push-up, bend the elbows. Come back up, glide it back to your child's pose. Inhale to come back up, hands and knees or plank, everything to midline. Exhale, lower. Inhale, back bend, wide collarbones, elbows in. And then exhale, downward facing dog, tuck your toes. Lift your hips. Okay, so three or four breaths here. Just slow it back down for a second. Find that fullness, that nourishing aspect of your breath. And knees can stay soft if you need to. Belly pulls in. And there's a softness in the shoulders whilst maintaining that strength in the hands. And can you let your face be a little bit softer? Know that child's pose is always an option. And when you're ready, bend your knees. Gaze to your hands, walk, step, or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, let's begin to add on into this a bit. Inhale, bend the knees. Arms to the sky, Ukutasana. Strength in the legs, feet are rooted. Lengthen the legs, forward fold, Uttanasana. Keep that softness in the knees if you need to. Halfway lift on the inhale. And hands down as you exhale, step your right foot to the back of the mat. Drop the back knee and uncurl the toes. Magnetize the feet, inhale the arms come to the sky. Low lunge. 
Exhale, hands find the earth. Tuck the back toe, raise the back knee. Inhale to pyramid pose. Drop the body weight down over that front, that left hip pulls back. Exhale, bend the front knee. Inhale, the arms all the way up to the sky. Magnetize the feet together, lift the chest. Exhale, hands go down. Inhale, three-legged dog, just like we have been doing, but this time, pause as you are. Now wrap that outer left hip bone down. Really good example of when the ego kind of takes control and we just want to get that leg high. Like, can you square the hips? Don't worry about what this looks like, what feels strong. Okay, high on the right tiptoe. Bend that left knee, now draw it up to the chest and then step the foot down in between the hands. Back into a high lunge, the arms are going to come all the way up to the sky on your inhale. Now magnetize the feet together. Maybe lift the heart a little bit higher once you find stability. Exhale, pull the hands to the heart, let the collarbones be wide, the shoulders be back and the feet stay strong. And then begin to hinge forward. And as you do, those back toes will become light. Keep hinging. Virabhadrasana three, warrior three. The heart gently puffs up into the thumbs. Outer right hip wraps down, inner thighs together. And then exhale, feet together at the top of the mat. Bend the knees, inhale straight into your Uttasana. Exhale, fold. Good, halfway lift, inhale. Hands down, exhale, let's set the left foot back. Okay, drop the back knee. Uncurl your toes, magnetize those feet. Inhale, arms to the sky. Good, as you exhale, your hands come down, frame the front foot. Tuck the back toes, raise the back knee. Inhale, root the feet and bow down over the top in pyramid. Right hip wraps back. Exhale, bend into the front knee, feet stay rooted. Inhale, arms come to the sky. Lift the chest. Okay, exhale, hands come down. Okay, find that rounding through the upper back, that rooting through the fingers, right leg lifts, inhale. Square the outer right hip bone down. Keep the chest lifting away from the ground. You are strong. High in the left hip toe. Your right knee circles towards the chest. Step that foot through. You can always give it a wiggle if you need to. High lunge, inhale, arms to the sky. Okay, extend through the fingers. Feet stay strong. As you exhale, your hands come to your heart, your elbows, your collarbones are wide, your finger pads press together and then lean. Your back foot is light, light, light until left leg lifts, warrior three. Puff the heart into the thumbs, the front belly draws up and in, left toes kick back and strong, and then exhale, feet together. Bend the knees. Arms to the sky, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Okay, exhale, right foot back. And then drop the back knee down. Uncurl the toes, inhale, magnetize the feet together, extend through the fingers, arms to the sky. And then exhale, take the hands down, and this time we're gonna have a change. Tuck the back toes under and begin to walk the hands back towards you. Now, you're gonna lift the right knee off so you're on your back tiptoes, and then lift that left leg off as well. Now you might hold it here, magnetizing the inner thighs together. Maybe, have a play, play being the key word, this is so fun. So press down, draw your inner thighs together, maybe see if you can hover your hands, bring them to your heart. Wobble, it means you're present. Take another breath in. Okay, exhale, set the left foot down. Let the right knee drop, and then you're going to lift yourself to kneeling from here. Press through the left foot, and the right knee lifts to the chest in stalk pose. Okay. Inhale, arms to the sky. Root the left leg like you're pulling that quadricep up. Soften the shoulders, but then extend the right foot forward. You are strong. Inhale. Exhale, sweep that leg back. As you do, hinge forward from the hips, standing split, right leg to the sky. Let the head melt down towards the ground. You can always bring that left hand like a little anchor behind your left heel if you would like. Don't worry so much about how high that leg lifts. Breathe. Can you find fullness of breath here? Take a breath in. 
Okay, exhale, feet together. And bend the knees, last Utkatasana, arms to the sky, inhale. Inner thighs together, shoulders back. Fold it down, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Hands down, exhale, step the left foot to the back of the mat. Back knee down, uncurl the toes, one low lunge, inhale, arms to the sky. Root the feet, fine leg. Exhale, hands down. Tuck the back toes under. Walk the hands back towards you to lengthen out the front leg. And then begin to shift the weight into the back foot. The right leg comes up to meet it. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Either point, point or flex the foot. Okay, I think nice and tall. Play around, maybe just on the fingers. Maybe balance. Maybe hands to heart center. Let yourself fall. Remember to breathe. Hands them down. The right foot finds the ground. The left knee finds the ground, kneeling. Root the right foot, inhale, left knee lifts up. Arms to the sky, inhale. Exhale, drop that leg forward. Okay, lift it a little bit higher. Root the right leg low. A back is super, super long. And then exhale, hands to the ground. The, right, the left leg sweeps up towards the sky, standing splits. Left hip bone wraps down. Maybe use the right hand as an anchor if you would like. Don't worry how high that leg lifts. Two full breaths, whatever this looks like. Take a sense of relief in a stretch. Okay, and then your feet come together. But this time, rather than coming into Ukatasana, take the feet wide out of the mat. And then soften the knees super, super generously, like the base bend, and bring your hands underneath your feet so that your toes tickle your wrist creases. Take a breath in like you're filling up with so much breath. And then on your exhale, let your elbows bend. Wrap the elbows forward, let the head drop down to the ground. And find length through the backs of the legs. And let this be a sense of release. And maybe close your eyes if you find that useful. Sometimes it's such a good tool to help you soften. Okay, one more inhale. And then nice and gently as you exhale, one at a time, release the hands. Plant them back down and just step into a downward facing dog. Okay, wiggle it out for a second. Maybe you just want to find stillness and that's okay too. Root down. Find a sense of home in your downward facing dog. And then the next time that you inhale, bringing your gaze to your hands, we're going to come into pigeon on the right hand side. So the right knee comes to the right wrist and that right leg finds a diagonal across the mat. The knee is wider than the right hip as the left leg extends out behind. That right hip doesn't ever have to touch the ground. Like you can put one of those blocks or books underneath your hip if you want a little bit more support or height. Okay. Now magnetize the feet together so there is a bit of buoyancy in the hips. And then melt it down to the forearms. Okay, you can stay here if this is where you would like to be. If you want to add on a little bit more, you might walk the hands a bit further forward. And if you want to add on one more time, your left arm sweeps underneath your right arm like you're threading the needle, and your gaze comes over to the right. Now know that when you take this variation, we have a tendency to roll to the left, and that's okay. But what we want is kind of to ground down through the right hand side a little bit more. And find that sense of heaviness here. Is there anything that's stopping you from relaxing? Is it rush? Is it tightness? And can you observe whatever that is without acting upon it? Like you're finding it interesting, you're exploring. And as you're here and you're still, can you slow your breath down more than you did when you moved? Do you find counting a useful tool? If no, it's okay.
And we'll stay nice and long through the neck. Gently, gently, gently magnetizing the hips together, even now. A little bit of um, a difference between being intentional and placing your body carefully and just flopping into the pose. Okay, when you're ready, if you're threading the needle, so if your left arm is underneath, root your right hand, sweep the left hand back forward and then bring yourself back up into a taller pigeon. Tuck the back toe, raise the back knee and just step back into a downward dog. You are more than welcome to take a vinyasa or a flow if you would like. If you want to just step straight there, that's okay too. Okay, let's do the other side. So the left knee is going to come to the left wrist with a leg a diagonal across the body. Knee is wider than the hip, right leg lengthens out behind. Remember if you want that block underneath the left hip, feel free. And then you might lower yourself down. You might stay here. This can already be a very strong stretch. If you want to add on, your arms reach forward. And then maybe if you want to add on still, the right arm threads underneath. And again, just being aware of how when you thread the needle of the right arm, you're likely to roll to the uh, right hand side. So you're just going to have to bring a little bit more awareness into the left. And your gaze maybe is over towards the left hand side. And you're just trying to soften into this. Are you holding tension anywhere, perhaps? Can you slow your breath back down, melt in more and more and more? And you might find that when you're here in Pigeon, that noise in your brain gets a little bit louder. But rather than jumping into it, Immersing yourself in those thoughts. You can do a flow again if you would like, otherwise. Whenever you are ready, you're going to come to seated at the top of your mat. And then when you get there, bring your feet out really nice and wide. Okay. Last couple of slow movements that we're going to do today are coming from this wide forward fold. And I think this is really fitting because this is one of those poses that you don't ever want to force. That just comes over time. Maybe a little bit like self-love. Practice, consistency. Okay. So when you're ready, you're going to take your right hand over towards the right hand side. Just gently using the elbow if you have that space to bring it here. You can always have the block here if you would like. And then begin to take this left set of ribs, spin it back. And take the left arm up and over by the ear. Let the elbow be soft. You can rest the arm on the side of the face. This is about softness right now. Imagine that you're lifting up through the left rib cage, all the way from that low back. Keep the legs nice and strong. And don't worry if that left hip is grounded. Kind of find like a sense of heaviness through it, but it's not about like rooting the bum down to the ground. And when you're ready, come back up and we'll go the other way. Left hand comes down, elbow compress if you want that space. If not, right hand to the right rib cage. Gently spin the rib cage back. Begin to lean the left shoulder down towards the left thigh. And then the right arm comes up and over by the ear. And close the eyes if you find that useful. Shoulders stay soft. The right sitting bone is heavy, but not necessarily rooted. And your breath is helping you create this space through the right side of the body. And today slow and heavy. And gently come all the way back up and take hold of the legs, bring them together. And then bend the knees and just roll yourself down to lying. And transitions slowly, like transitions also play a big part of our practice and how we feel about ourselves. And when we even rush transitions, sometimes that's kind of indicative of how we're feeling. So we're going to keep them nice and slow. Okay, let your feet drop out to the sides. So your knees drop out to the sides, your feet together, one hand onto your tummy, one hand onto your heart. Physical reminders of your body and your breath.
thankful for everything that your body does for you. Knowing that breathing is enough. Being here is enough. And then whenever you are ready, you can either stay as you are or lie down on your back in a more traditional Shavasana. And just take five minutes for yourself. 